Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share a revelation with you. Uh, actually, it's three revelations that the Lord has given me uh, progressively. And this revelation speaks to the love of God for us. And it gives us a, a picture, uh, a word picture of what this looks like and so I want to start with the revelation I, I was given back probably 15 years ago. And I was spending time with the Lord. I had been praying and asking for insight on what an anointing was. And so as I was spending time with the Lord, I had a candle burning. And I was looking at the candle and suddenly I felt the Lord ask me a question. What is the purpose of the wax? And as I thought about it, I said in my spirit, I suppose it prevents the wick from being consumed. And then I felt in my spirit, the Lord respond, you are the wick, I am the fire, and the wax is the anointing. You are the wick, I am the fire, and the wax is the anointing. And later in my studies, I, I came across scripture that actually uh, tells us that our God is a consuming fire. It's in uh, Hebrews 12, 29. It's in Deuteronomy 4, 24. Our God is a consuming fire. And so the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit, the Lord sent the Holy Spirit and for every born again believer, we're sealed in the Holy Spirit. And that's, that allows the presence of God to be on us without actually consuming us. And so I always thought, wow, that's an amazing revelation. It was a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I was listening to a John Paul Jackson video and he was explaining how the Lord was training him to be obedient, to hear his voice, okay? And so John Paul explained how God would send him into a store, just randomly go in there, go. And when John Paul was obedient, he said, I could feel the fire of God's presence on me. He said, but when I wasn't obedient, he said, I could feel it lift, it would lift. And so naturally, I am picturing the candle, all right, that the Lord, where the Lord had given me that revelation years ago. And so I'm thinking about that, that as he was not doing what the Lord said, that the, the fire would lift, okay, and he would feel that, that lift off of him. And I'm like, well, if the fire lifts from us, Lord, you know, and I'm not really praying it, but I'm kind of contemplating it in my spirit, if the fire lifts then we're basically just a wick surrounded by a ball of wax, okay? But I know the wax is the spirit. I know the wax is the anointing. But at the same time, I'm going, well, how are we even valuable if we're just a wick surrounded by wax? And these things are just kind of going through my mind, and I'm not really sure what to think of all that. And so I didn't tell anyone. I was just contemplating it in my spirit, one of those things, you know, that you just mull over. And so I was at my friend Vera's a few weeks later, and she said, oh, I want you to see this this YouTube video. Uh, she said, it's a revelation about Psalm 22, where, where that's the Psalm about the Messiah when he's on the cross, and he talks about being a worm, and, and that there's a, uh, there's a lot of revelation concerning what that meant about when he called himself a worm, that specific type of worm. And that was an interesting revelation. But what Vera didn't know is I, as I was sitting there listening to the man to expound upon Psalm 22, suddenly when he's reading Psalm 22, 14, all of a sudden I am given this amazing revelation. Psalm 22, 14, where the Lord, when he's on the cross, Messiah says, my heart is like wax. It is melted. And he talks about it melting within him. My heart is like wax. And so I'm picturing Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus' heart, Jesus is saying his heart is like wax. And I'm like, the wax is the anointing. And so then I'm going, okay, so when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, it's almost as if he sent his heart. And we, the wick, we are encased in the heart of Christ through the Holy Spirit. And then I'm getting this revelation like, wow, 
picturing us in the heart of Jesus. And we know we hear the scriptures about us being hidden in Christ. We talk about staying in him, hidden in him. And, and I'm getting this picture of, of the heart of Jesus and, and the wick, us being just literally encompassed, encased in his heart, which is the, the anointing, the Holy Spirit. And so I ended up buying um, like these little wax hearts as a reminder, okay, that we are like this wick, completely encompassed by the love of God through the heart of Christ, through the Holy Spirit that has sealed us in Christ. And so I thought, wow, that's an amazing, amazing revelation. But it doesn't end there, okay? So this morning, I'm spending time with the Lord, and I'm reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm, I'm reading about Paul where he's talking about uh, how, you know, Jesus was the second Adam, and Adam, he was, uh, he was a living being, but, but Jesus was a, um, okay, so I'm just going to read the scripture here that I was reading, and, and the Lord began to stir more revelation in me concerning what I've already been shown. And it says, uh, starting with verse 45, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. That would be Jesus. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. This is all really important. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And that's like us in our natural fleshly being nature. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have become the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Okay, so we, and then he goes into, of course, uh, the famous scriptures concerning the rapture. And, but I'm, I'm focused on this image of the, the man, uh, which would be Adam, as, and then the image of Jesus that, you know, we're going to receive this heavenly nature, all right? And as I'm contemplating this, suddenly I remembered that last night is that right before I went to sleep, the Lord gave me a word in my spirit, and I heard it a couple times, potsherd, potsherd. Now, you've probably read that in scriptures. I've read it, and what I pictured was like some kind of a small little plant. I don't know. That's just always what I thought of, but I felt the Holy Spirit bring it back up in my spirit as I'm contemplating this scripture in 1 Corinthians. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and look that up. I've already got my Strong's uh, open here on my phone. So I, I bring up the word potsherd. It comes up in four biblical references, one of which is Psalm 22. And I, I look at it and I'm like, what? It's actually the verse right after Psalm 22, 14, where Jesus talked about having uh, his heart was wax melting within him. And the second verse, verse 15, he says, my strength is dried up like a potsherd. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. And so I'm like, well, what is a potsherd? So I look that up and it's a clay pot or an earthen vessel, an earthen vessel. And as I'm thinking about it, suddenly Holy Spirit's pouring this revelation into me that here we are seeing a contrast in nature. Verse 14, Jesus, the Messiah, is talking about his heart is like wax. This is speaking of his divine nature and how it responds to the presence of God. It is melted. Then he says, my strength is dried up like a potsherd. Okay, his natural that strength is dried up. That earthen vessel is dried up. So in essence, what he is saying basically is he's making a contrast between his divine nature which like wax is yielded, pliable in the hands of the creator, of the father. And the human nature, which is the strength of man, is hardened in the hands of God, in the creator. And we, what Paul is saying, are going to be given that same nature, that same, like Jesus, um, a heart that is pliable, a heart that is divine. We will have that divine nature. And then I remembered uh, last year, I think it was, 
my husband and I had gone with my friend Vera and her husband to uh, to that Sight and Sound Theater in, uh, uh, it's in Pennsylvania somewhere, I can't remember, the Lancaster, a PA, I think. Anyway, we watched the play of Moses, and there was a scene in that play that stood out to me, and it was in this scene, Pharaoh and Moses are having a conversation, and, and Pharaoh basically says, well, you know, you said your God is the one who hardened my heart, so how am I responsible for what I did? That kind of thing, right? And we know the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, right? And this was really interesting, and it's not in the Bible, but I felt like this analogy really brought light to that truth, what happened there. Moses' response was, the same sun shines on both the wax and the clay. One becomes soft, the other hardens. But here we've got, in verse 15 of Psalm 22, the Messiah having this heart of wax melting, but the natural man, that, that which Jesus said, the flesh counts for nothing, the spirit gives life, that flesh, that, that earthly vessel is, is hardened and is broken and worthless. And so basically, I believe this the whole revelation speaks to, first of all, we are encased in the heart of Christ as children of God who have given the Lord Jesus our lives, who are following him, uh, asked him to be Lord and Savior of our lives. We are sealed in the Spirit of God, encompassed, protected, so that the fire of God can literally rest on us without us being consumed. But even when we don't feel that fire, even when we just feel like, you know, a wick surrounded by wax, all right, we are still encased in the love and in the heart of Christ, no matter how we feel day to day. And the Lord himself had a heart. Jesus had a heart that was yielded to the Father. Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say. His heart was so completely yielded to the Father that there was nothing on this earth he was here to do for his own pleasure, for his own purposes. He was here to carry out the will of the Father. And, and his divine nature, I believe, gives us that same heart, a desire to carry out the will of the Father, uh, not to do just what we want to do, not to be here for our own pleasures, but to be yielded to the will of the Father. That, that is the key. His love is poured out to us, and then our, our will and everything that we have is poured back to him because of the divine nature of Christ in us. So I hope and I pray, church, that you'll take this message to the Lord, that you'll think about this. And the more we think about revelation, the more the Lord often gives us, as he showed me as I was thinking about these things, and he added more, more revelation. I hope and I pray you'll take these things to the Lord in prayer, and you'll ponder them in your heart, and you'll read the scriptures and go deeper with the Lord. He, he wants to go deeper with us. He wants to have that intimacy with us uh, where we are um, just spending that time in his presence and enjoying his presence on us, just like the fire on a candle. And when we do that, it's like that light is a natural result. The light of Christ shining through us is a natural result of our time in the Lord. And I hope, I pray everyone has a blessed day and that your, your life and your heart is just overflowing with the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, as always, it is my prayer, church, that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.